What's up guys, Stefan here, s &E's Garage. We're waiting on some engine parts to wrap this engine up. We're waiting on some gaskets, things like that, to uh, get it nice and freshened up. Um, I figured, let's try to see if we can save this, this pump housing. A new one of these housings is in the area of $400, and we went ahead and cleaned up as much of this corrosion as we can. So I did go ahead and order a new wear ring. Uh, but what we have to do next is start getting ready to press out and get these bearings out of here. Um, so the first thing that we're going to have to do is remove this snap ring. So I do have a set of snap ring pliers. We're going to go ahead, let this sit with some PB blaster in it. And uh, at that point, we're going to go ahead and uh, see if we can get this snap ring out. All right, guys, so we went ahead, we got this snap ring out. You'll see it here. Uh, we used a set of snap ring pliers, <clears throat> excuse me, like I had mentioned, and a flathead screwdriver. And we basically got in there, got one side of the snap ring out, and then I used the screwdriver to get behind the snap ring and walk it out the rest of the way. Uh, so the next thing we have to do here is remove these seals. Um, and that, I guess that's a bushing in there. We have to get that out as well. Uh, so the easiest way to do this, and this is how Cowie Performance does them as well, is to set this guy on the ground and then you're going to use a flathead screwdriver and pry up and this stuff should come out. Alright guys, so we got our three seals and our bushing out here. Uh, this housing is not in the best shape. This is going to require some scotch Bright and a lot of patience. But we're at a point now where we can go ahead and uh, start pressing these bearings out. Like I said, we don't have a press. We're going to use a BFH and see if we can get it to move. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to use the old shaft. We're going to put the shaft in right here, and we are going to push these down towards the bottom. So they're going to come out down. So let's uh, see if we can't get them out. All right, guys, the BFH uh, method worked flawlessly. We just went ahead, like I said, we inserted our shaft in here like this, and we just beat this end with the hammer, and you'll see both of our bearings came out. So now we have the shaft completely gutted. In here, this area actually does not look too bad, so this should be fine. I'm worried about the seal side here. Um, so we're going to wait until the wear ring comes in. Uh, so I can install that and make sure that's okay before I go ahead and waste my, my Cowie Performance Kit over there on this um, housing. But stay tuned. Alright guys, so we got this guy, uh, brought it over to the parts washer, cleaned it out real nice, and we also used some scotch Brite here um, with a little bit of XPS spray to just go ahead and, and kind of try to clean it up a little bit more. There are some minor little gouges in here. I'm really not too worried about that. And then we came back here, clean this area up too. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to take some of our XPS spray. We're going to spray it on a paper towel and we're just going to coat this thing with this anti-corrosion spray just so it doesn't corrode the raw aluminum doesn't oxidize while we're waiting for our wear ring. So you'll see I just sprayed some on here and we're just going to wipe it in here like this. Wipe it clean with this. Get in there. We're going to come in here in this area we cleaned with the scotch Bright, and we're going to come back here and we're just going to coat all the surfaces in here with with this XPS spray just to keep this thing nice and fresh. Um, and then we'll be back with you when our wear ring comes in. Now, I might need a press to put that in. We're gonna try to do it without it um, so I can get it on video because I don't have a press that I would be able to record while using, unfortunately. Um, so we're pretty much done here until we get our wear ring. Once we get our wear ring in and I know that the housing is good because this is all depending on how this wear ring takes. Uh, so once we get the wear ring in, I'll know that the housing is good and then we're going to move on to the bearing and shaft installation. Um, and then that's also when we will install our impeller. 
Alright guys, so we got our replacement stainless steel uh, wiring here. You'll see there is just a little weld joint in it. Uh, I couldn't find any that didn't have that. Uh, but it really shouldn't affect anything. Uh, so what we're going to do now is I tried to place this in there. And it is so tight that it's like hard to get it started. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw this guy in the freezer overnight. We're going to let it deep freeze. And hopefully that shrinks it a little bit and it'll, you know, allow us to get in there a little bit better. Uh, now once we go ahead and start pressing that in, we are going to use this product here called Indian Head Gasket Shellac. And we're going we're gonna to get this in almost all the way. And then we're going to put a little bit up here and a little bit at the bottom and finish pressing it in. And what that's going to do is seal both surfaces, both the outer and the inner surface here from allowing water to get behind uh, this liner and do what it did to the last one. Alright guys, please excuse the mess on my toolbox right now. Um, I did just want to show you that we went ahead and got this new liner pressed in today. Um, so what I had to do, I took some pictures, I'm going to drop them in the comments, or not in the comments, in the video. Um, actually, I'll drop them in right now. So what you'll see is we stopped at about maybe an inch, inch and a half before we pressed it in all the way. And then we used some Indian head uh, sealer. It's like a, uh, they call it shellac, I think it's called. Um, it's supposed to be very good and it hardens like an epoxy, uh, more or less. So this is what we used, like I said, gasket shellac compound. We added some to the top lip and some to the bottom lip and then pressed it in the rest of the way just to make sure that we had a watertight seal here because we don't want water getting in between this lip and the back lip and causing this to corrode again. Uh, but what we did have to do is we did have to grind a slight chamfer, uh, basically a beveled edge into the whole circumference of this um, jet pump in order to get this wear ring to go in there straight because it kept cocking on me and trying to go in there crooked. And then we went ahead and used some of that same shellac here um, to, to plug the hole where the set screw goes. So that is also done. Um, so now we are ready to go ahead and start installing our um, our kit, or basically our, our shaft kit from Cali Performance. Um, I'm going to drop a link to those guys down below, Cali Performance. They've been awesome. They've been you know helping us out uh, with, with pricing and with... Um, you know, general knowledge, I've, you know, they've helped me a lot with this whole journey. Alright guys, so now we're at a point where we can go ahead and start pushing our bearings here um, into the housing. So you're going to want to start with this housing upside down. Now, uh, the guys at Cowie Performance specifically uh, recommend against doing this the way that I'm going to do it. Um, but we're going to use a 32 millimeter socket because it fits right on the outside of the bearing. It's not going to hit the seals or anything. Um, so what we're going to do is, um, number one, I'm going to set you up on the tripod and we're going to spray a little bit of uh, lubricant down into the bore of this guy here. And then we're going to go ahead, drop this bearing in, we're going to drop the socket on top of the bearing, and we're going to very carefully tap it in until it bottoms out. And we'll know it's bottomed out when we see that it reaches the bottom of this lip here. Uh, so let me get you on the tripod. We're probably going to do this on the ground and uh, we'll see how we make out. Now in the Cali Performance video, they use fogging oil uh, to lube this up. Really doesn't matter what you use in my opinion. You could probably use PV Blaster or whatever you got. I just happen to have fogging oil sitting right here. So we're just very carefully going to spray a little bit of this into this bore to lubricate it. We're going to grab an extension for our socket that we're going to be using. All right. And we're going to very carefully lower our bearing into place. Now we want to try to get this on there as straight as possible. And we're just going to take our hammer and we're going to very gently tap this in. Now, if I feel that there's too much resistance, I am probably going to stop and uh, 
bring this over to a press. I just wanted to try it this way first because, you know, it's easier to be able to just do it right here. So let me grab the hammer um, and we'll see what we got. And that should be it. That should have bottomed out, which it did. I'm just going to stick my finger in there, spin the bearing. It spins very nicely. So let's go ahead, get our second bearing, and repeat. Okay, here we have our second bearing. It's literally the same exact one as the first one. I'm just, again, going to put a slight amount of fogging oil in here, like so. We're going to lower this guy down as straight as possible. Okay. And again, we want it centered on the race. And you'll see I'm using very moderate hits. I'm not pounding the heck out of it. And you'll hear the hammer. Uh, you'll hear it change pitches when we bottom out. like that. So now we're bottomed out with the second bearing, then they both spin flawlessly. Alright guys, so for our next step we're gonna go ahead and flip this guy back over the way it is. And we have this collar here. I already got some grease on it. Um, you don't have to, just I greased it up. And uh, you're going to go ahead and drop this in just like this, fat side down. And then you're going to use your grease syringe that's included with your kit and you're going to squeeze some grease on top of this bearing like so and then you're going to take your seal put it in in the same area that the bushing goes and we're going to use that same 32 millimeter socket to go ahead and press that seal in so you're basically just going to take your socket push down and you'll fill the seal bottom out and we're going to do the same process for the next two seals so again we're going to stick some grease in the hole like so we're going to grease up the seal and you just want to make sure that when you grease your seal you get some on the sealing surface as well so we don't blow the seal out and we're going to do the same thing Get it centered, use our socket here, push it in, and you will feel it bottom out. Give it a little tappy tappy if you'd like. All right, and now we have one more seal to do. Same thing. Number one, get the dog hair off of that grease. All right. Grease it up. Grease it up. Push it down. Use our socket. Tap it in. And you should have these seals down just enough so that you can see where the snap ring goes. Alright guys, so we went ahead and reinstalled our snap ring here. Here you'll see it in. So the only thing you're going to want to do with your snap ring pliers is you're going to want to stick them basically into the two snap ring holes. And more or less you're going to want to push it out to help seat the snap ring into place. You'll see here that ours is seated throughout the whole, you know, circumference here of the edge. So now we're going to be ready to 
I believe we're going to flip it back upside down, start working on this end. So as I said, we're starting on this end now. You're going to take your little brown O-ring and you're going to install it on the end of your new KP shaft here. So let me just get this on and we'll proceed to the next step. Right, guys, so we got our O-ring here installed. We went ahead and put a little bit of grease on it with the grease syringe they gave us. And now we are just going to go ahead and very carefully slide our shaft into place. Alright guys, well now that we have our shaft in, we're going to go ahead and thread on our impeller. Um, we are just going to use that grease syringe, if I can find it, um, and put a little bit of grease on those um, threads before we go ahead and thread the impeller on. A little bit of grease on this, for the impeller threads, like so. going to take our impeller here and thread it on. You're going to hold the back. There's a nut on the back of this you're going to want to hold while you thread that on. Alright guys, so now that we have our impeller threaded in here by hand, we're going to take our tool here, the spline tool, you can get this at Cowie Performance. I'll leave a link to that below. Uh, you're going to go ahead and torque this impeller down to 110 foot-pounds. So like I said, I'm going to try to do this here. I have my torque wrench set at 110 foot-pounds. Um, it's a 21 millimeter wrench on this side. And like I said, we're just going to go ahead and attempt to get this torque reading. It's a little more difficult than it looks with this thing being on the ground here. Let me see if we can spin it this way and step on it. Yeah, we're going to have to get this in a vise to get to the final torque. So let me get this in a vise, um, and we'll finish torquing this down. All right, guys. So now we're going to grab our, our large cone here and our largest O-ring, and we're going to go ahead and install that O-ring on this cone. And then we're also going to take a little bit of grease and grease this up so it slides right in. So here we have our grease on there. We're just going to go ahead... coat this whole thing with this grease and KP uh, Cali Performance does provide you with the grease and everything you'll need to install this and we're also going to take this o-ring and we're going to install it into this cone here this is going to help seal the next cone that we install with this kit you're just going to want to make sure you get it in the groove that it belongs, which we just did. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do here is install our three Allen head screws. Uh, the kit comes with six of them, depending on which pump you have is going to depend on uh, which one you use. We use the larger ones on this pump, but we are just going to go ahead and run these down. Until it bottoms out. You'll know it's bottomed out when some of the grease that you applied um, on that o-ring uh, squish out from the underside of the cone. Alright guys, the next thing we're going to do is install our really small bearing here. I went ahead and coated the outside of this with some grease um, and you have to put this in straight and you just kind of have to walk it in. This o-ring that we put in is kind of giving us a hard time here but um, maybe if we take that O-ring out. Oh, you know what? There it goes. It's going. Alright, we're just going to walk this in, down into place. 
So I just used the 27, I believe this, or a 24 millimeter socket. I put it right on the outside of the bearing and I just tapped it down until I heard it hollow out. And that's what it just did. Now this is what makes the Cowie Performance Kit so special. This nut here. This nut goes on the snout of this bearing like so and gets torqued to 50 foot pounds. But what this nut does is prevents this impeller from moving forward and damaging the engine because that is what causes a lot of these engines to fail. So we're going to go ahead, I believe I should be able to get to 50 foot pounds, no problem, um, on the floor here because it's really not that much. Uh, but we're just going to go ahead and torque this down to 50 foot pounds. So there we have it, 50 foot pounds. Now this nut, like I said, with that nut in place, this will completely prevent your jet pump from failing and causing engine failure. So our last step here is to go ahead and install your last O-ring on this cone. And then we're going to use a large Allen key here. I believe they say it is a 10 millimeter, which I should have. I do. And we're just going to start this by hand and install it also by hand. All right, guys, and that's it. We just went ahead and completely rebuilt this jet pump all the way down from the bare assembly. We installed a new wear ring. We installed the Cowie Performance Kit, which included new bearings and uh, their upgraded shaft, and we are ready to go. You spin this thing, it spins nice and free, no noises, no rubbing, our clearances look good, and that should do it. So if this video helped you rebuild the jet pump on your STX 12 or 15F, please like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time.